Hello, I am here today with Stacy Ogle, president and owner of Cole Graphic Solutions Incorporated. Stacy, I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Julie. It's my pleasure. And Stacy, you just finished the Resilient Transformation Academy. And this is an academy that we take executives through to help find more peace and balance in their lives in a natural way. And as we talk up through this, I just would love for the audience to hear a little bit about your journey in this program and where you started and where you are today. So can you talk a little bit about how you were when we first met, <laughs> what you were experiencing uh, yeah. and what you were going through? Yeah. So um, I would say that generally I'm a positive, joyful, energetic person. Um, and that had changed and I discovered it had changed deep in the middle of 2020. It didn't change just in 2020 though. It was a cumulative change over probably about five years. Um, and it, and it just came from, um, I'm a business owner, um, some, some heart wrenching things that happened there. I don't know what all of it was, but somehow I lost my footing and found myself behaving in a really, really different way than I valued or expected myself to, and, uh, ended up deeply depressed, uh, in the middle of 2020. And, um, it was kind of a wreck and that's not me. So, yeah, I, I remember when we first met and we were talking about where you were and, um, what, where you really chose to be. And yeah. when you were sharing with me, this is not who I normally am. And I want to get back to who I was in the past and even better so tell me a little bit about your motivation for actually doing this program. Is there anything more than just, I want to get out of this depression. I want to get out of this place where I am. What else was your motivation to do this program? Uh, honestly, part of it was my marriage. I have a wonderful partner that I've uh, been married to for four years and knows me better than anyone. And uh, he was, he was at his wits end, I would guess I would say with, um, just seeing the difference in me, seeing me not able to rebound, seeing me um, not deal with our employees in the way that they expected me to. He just could see the difference and he was worried about me um, and, and just kind of called me on it. And so that was one of the motivations. But I mean, who, who wants to live in, in depression and unhappiness? I know that's not, that doesn't match my values, that doesn't match my foundation. And so I knew I was sick. I wasn't functioning properly. And when you're sick, you go to a doctor. Yeah. And so when you talk about not being able to rebound and how you were managing your employees, can you talk a little bit about that? Like what, um, what was happening for you? Well, if I can, I'll just talk a little bit about my business and what I do. So my husband and I own a commercial screen and graphic printing business, a digital large format business. And we have for 31 years with about 30 employees and um, our employees are long-term family members. Um, we have always felt one of our first callings is to create an environment that's really positive and um, enriching for the people that work for us, that when they leave us, they're better off than when they came. We try to treat people with a lot of respect um, and just and just really honor them. And because of that, we have an, a phenomenal team of people. Uh, of our small group, we have three that have been with us over 25 years and a lot that have been with us 10 years. So some of that is, is because of my leadership. I mean, um, respecting people, honoring people, encouraging people to look beyond themselves and um, do more not only in their jobs, but in their own lives. So that's kind of a normal me. And I had kind of atrophied into a place where um, I was avoiding people and um, COVID made that too easy because I was working from home and not seeing my employees face to face very often. Um, and so I, you know, I, I guess it's, it's like a muscle that you don't use and maybe you don't notice it weakening until all of a sudden you try to stand on it and you can't. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, just too far from where I knew I could be, where I ought to be with with my faith and my beliefs and it, kind of one of those, why can't you pull yourself up by the bootstrap stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and so um, reached out, found, found you on LinkedIn, Julie, and um, 
started the process of learning, relearning, and learning a lot of new skills about how to manage what's uh, going on inside of me. Uh, and it's made a tremendous difference. You know, you said managing what's going on inside of me. So can you talk a little bit about the program so that people might wonder, well, what does that mean going on inside of me? Because yeah. most of us, when we're facing these kind of challenges like depression and just not bouncing back and having a difficult time, we look for things outside of ourselves to make us feel different. So can you explain what, what you mean by looking inside of myself? Yeah, well, you know, like I said, when I started, I'm generally a positive, joyful person. I had not, be, I had lost that. And so my self-talk had become habitually negative. I had um, family relationships, a couple of close family relationships, one with my oldest son, one with a brother, um, that there were things in that would trigger me. And instead of being able to manage that, I would be oversensitive, reactionary, and self-damning. I mean, just really came to the place where I felt like everything was my fault, um, ended up doing a lot of, a lot more crying than, I mean, you, you can attest to that, Julie, because <laughs> we had some, some cry sessions, crying. for sure. <laughs> um, but just not me, you know, and so, you know, realizing going through the program and, and through the academy and learning about observing my self-talk. And I have to say a lot of this, I mean, the program is wonderful. The tools are wonderful, but Julie, you are particularly skilled at this. And when you build a relationship with somebody that you've given permission to call you on stuff, um, you are graceful at it, but it's really nice to have somebody go, hold it, hold it, hold it. What did you just say? And you do that well. And so I'm um, just in our early conversation and am pretty transparent and honest. So I kind of call um, hooey on things that sometimes I think are hooey. I was a little bit skeptical. Um, and I told you that right off, off the bat. Um, but I started recognizing through your help, these patterns that I was um, waking up and falling asleep, blaming myself for things and for having uh, not been able to have a crystal ball about how COVID was going to impact my business. I mean, gosh, I've got uh, a wonderful team of folks to whom I've implied for an awfully long time that they can count on us as long as they do their part, they can count on us for a, for a job. And, and here I was looking at my business possibly closing and a bunch of people who I had made this implicit promise to um, being left short. And so really coming down on myself. And I didn't really know that I was doing that. It was so internal and so quiet. I'm not a person who kind of typically doesn't spend a lot of time worrying about the negative stuff. I focus on the positive. And what I realized now that I've done is just kind of compacted the negative, not necessarily processed it and worked it out. And so it gets to rear its ugly head again. And um, so what I've, I've learned in this process uh, and through the program, through the academy and through um, our conversations is hearing, hearing the stuff I'm saying and thinking in a completely different way and recognizing I do, gosh, I do say that. I didn't realize I said that. I wouldn't have thought that I was like that, but you know, I wasn't as self-aware, I guess, as I thought I was. And so using the tools to stop a negative comment, self-comment, thought. And sometimes that for me ended up with little things like putting sticky notes on mirrors or on my computer monitor to remind me um, of the positive stuff. And so my language about myself and the future is very different now than it was six months ago, internal and external. And people have noticed it. I think that's really key is other people will start to notice it and then, and they'll look at you and go, did you get a haircut? What's different <laughs> about you? But it's the inside is different. It is. And I have to say when I was in a crappy place and I was thinking about launching this, my husband was not supportive. He's a good, good friend, but he didn't know anything about it except for what he'd heard from me secondhand, which was kind of like, well, I don't know very much, but I'm, you know, and he wasn't very supportive. And I had a conversation with him, told him, you know, why I was interested in it. And he kind of said, okay, it wasn't a month before he was saying things like, have you had a session lately? 
and he, oh, Julie. Julie. Oh, he, he talked to Julie. He talked to Julie. But he became a huge supporter. He became a person who, when I was, uh, you know, dealing with my stuff and not prioritizing myself, um, he would remind me that this is good for you. I see a difference. And that's huge. I mean, 40 years of marriage, this guy knows me inside out. And he saw the difference, maybe even better than I did. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really interesting. What you talked about is that gradually over time, what you realized is you were starting to say these negative things to yourself, but you didn't realize it was as bad as it was until somebody reflected it back to you and you got to see it. And it reminds me of that analogy of the boiling frog in a pot of water. Have you heard about that analogy? Yeah, but go ahead and tell it. Yeah, it's if you put a frog in a pot of water that's just room temperature and you slowly heat it up, the frog will boil to death because it's its environment. It just gets used to it. But if you had a pot of water that was boiling and you drop the frog in it, the frog would just jump right out because it doesn't feel right. And yeah. so he knows to jump right out. And I think that's what happens to us, especially as presidents of companies or business owners is we just start to slowly boil and we care so much. I mean, the way that you talked about your business and the culture there and having employees that were there for 25 years, this is your family mm -hmm. and you're on the verge of possibly closing down when you and I met. So there was that, that pressure. It's like the internal pressure and the cooker that we're in. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, how do I, how do I dial back that pressure? And what you learned to do was dial back the pressure from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. And was there anything that you had tried before this program that maybe didn't work like some traditional methods that you've tried? Uh, over the years, certainly I've done lots and lots of therapy, talk therapy, um, certainly exercise, um, you know, refining relationships um, and, and they've helped over time, but this was probably one of my lowest points. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the joy that I get from being a business owner is an emotion. And the other side of that coin is, you know, pretty devastating when uh, it's, it's not about making money. It's not about that. It's about the people that I work with and developing them and encouraging them and watching them flourish and grow. Um, and that the other side of that coin is an emotion that's really deep. So maybe I'm the frog that caught myself right before I boiled. Well, and, and if you would share with people, because people might be listening to this and going, okay, that's me. I'm about to boil. And they might be saying, yeah, but how much, how much time did you put into it? What was the thing that you had to start that really opened you up? Can you talk a little bit about the time that you put into it? Um, was it too much time? Was it not enough time? And just kind of talk about the, maybe the skeptical things that you tried at first and just give them an idea of what you went through. Sure. Well, time-wise, it, it wasn't too much time. It's a, a daily commitment, um, gosh, of, you know, just doing IV sessions and stuff like that. It's, it's less than an hour a day and broken into chunks that um, are good for you. So no, the time commitment wasn't too little. I could have done a better job of disciplining myself to use the tools more frequently and move myself along further. That's true in any sport, any activity, you know, the, what you put into it is what you get out of it. So if there's a fault there, it was with me. Um, but even with that, I made considerable progress. And so I don't think the time commitment was too much. And what was the other question you asked me? Was there anything that you started and you had like a skeptical thought about like, oh, this is just a bunch of food. I'm not is it know. okay if I say this stuff? <laughs> sure. Because I remember so, this conversation well. Yeah, <laughs> I remember it too. And, you know, you, you talk a lot about, you know, the, everybody's read books about, you know, positive thinking and positive exclaiming. And, and I remember saying to you, Julie, just because you call it something different doesn't change it. And you thanked me for my honesty, but it was, you know, when you would say, well, instead of saying, um, I'm, you know, I, I, I never finish anything. I start things, but I never finish them. And you would say, well, how about if you, you talk about the things you do finish and that you do finish. And my skepticism said, you can't just talk it away. It has, I have to change. I have to be different. 
but I didn't realize that it was the talking that changed my heart and my mind and then changed the reality. So, um, you know, I made fun of you and we teased and, and laughed and I'm brutally honest. Um, but I, I am sold now because I recognize that by speaking internally or externally, the, the, the bad stuff, I, my eyes are all on the bad stuff and the scale is weighted wrong. And so as soon as I started recognizing the positives and putting everything into proper perspective, um, it, it, it changed my wiring. I don't know. I, I process differently now. I catch myself more quickly. I hear myself say things and I go, eh, 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 don't do that. That's, you know, change the way you, you think about that, or that's a red flag. Let's work on that. And then I've always got the Academy that I can go back to and kind of browse and find the thing that, that helps me out right then. It's like flipping back through a good book. So, um, yeah, no, I, 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 I was skeptical. I, um, I, I guess I, I, I'm a pretty realist person. I'm not woo woo. I'm, and so I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm a pull up your bootstraps and move on girly. And, um, this took some work. It, it took some work and it's still taking work. I'm not done. I'm, I actually am just at the beginning of the journey, honestly, but it's so much better. Um, and I, and I have some tools now. I have ways to, to process things and kind of shift my attitude pretty quickly. It's kind of surprising how quickly it is. Once you, once you turn on that awareness and you see it and you were coachable, you, you were, you were a little stubborn at first, but (laughs) you became very coachable. And that's, I think when things really started to shift is you put things into practice. And, you know, we say, this is not about information. It's about transformation. And so it's a real testament to you and your perseverance of sticking with it and moving through it, even though you were skeptical at the very beginning, because it's really paid off. So yeah, let's talk about what's different in your life right now. What's different in your business? What's different in your confidence and your communication skills? Before we go there, you just prompted a thought that I want to share. Sure. And, and it, it, it's an, so we have relationships now. This is about my relationship with my daughter-in-law and my son, but um, getting in that really negative space. And maybe this even predates my depression, but um, I would interpret things that other people did through this filter that was, it's my fault, it's my fault. What did I do wrong to deserve this? And through this process, this is one of the the really nice offshoots that isn't business related, but I recognize that I approach those relationships expecting to get feedback that I wasn't liked or that, that, you know, of the problem points. I mean, I have a loving family. We all get along really well. I don't want to give that impression, but it was kind of looking for the problem. And I entered, changed the way I looked at those relationships, let other people have responsibility for their lives, their reactions. They're not my problem. Um, I'm not the originator of whatever upset them today. And started to get different responses from those people. So recognizing that I must've been walking into some of those relationships with kind of a negative vibe that expected problems, even though I totally wasn't aware of it. But when I started, uh, when I approached it with, an, with a freedom to say, I'm a good person and I haven't made mistakes and everybody's entitled to have bad days or opinions about other people and that's okay. Um, I got different feedback from other people. It was as though, the rules of the relationship had changed a little bit without anybody talking about it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so now I'm sorry about the other question you asked me, I forgot. Yeah, I just would like to, to point something out. The rules of the relationship changed, not with that person. Mm-hmm. The rules of the relationship changed with you. Yep. You have a different relationship to yourself now. Yes. Because when you were expecting things to be a problem, what you did is you shifted your attention and your focus and you expected things to be coherent you expected a connection yeah. and oftentimes when we have our attention locked into something then we will prove that our belief mm-hmm. is true we'll look for ways to prove that and so, so all true. you did was change perspective and then you would prove that that belief that you held of yourself was true and it showed up yeah and I'll always remember when you uh sent me a text and said look at this response it's way different than it used to be and this yeah. is how quickly it works. It happens really, really fast when you just take the teachings and put it to use and 
you see some really quick changes. And I think especially for those of us that are leaders, yeah. we tend sometimes to think we're in control of more than we are. And so to let other people own their reactions and, and understand who you are, what you're anchored by, the good stuff, um, and keep working on the stuff you need to work on. So yeah, people respond differently to that. And I would love it if you talk a little bit about your business, because as we had just mentioned, when we met, you were thinking that you might have to close the doors of your business yeah. and you're in a completely different place right now. Can you talk about this? And this is about six months later. So if you yeah. could share a little bit about yeah. that, that would be great. We were definitely at a place. We have very healthy business. We've had it for 31 years. Like I said, we have a crew that we love. Our customers love us. We're always growing uh, debt-free before COVID. And before you know it, uh, we're deeply in debt. Our revenue was at sometimes less than 50% of what it was. Um, and we made the choice as long as we could, we were not going to terminate our employees. Our labor is a great cost uh, when we don't have work for them to do. But because of the investments we'd made in them, because of the relationships we had them and our belief early on that this is temporary. Who knew what COVID was going to bring, right? We made the decision that we're not going to let anybody go. We're going to hold on to them. We didn't have um, Deadwood at the time. We had great people. And so uh, watching, watching the finances go, letting go of our income, investing our own money in the business again, um, and beginning to, to take a look at other assets in our lives. And what are we going to have to do? Here we are at a point where we thought we'd be retiring at, you know, handing off our, our happy little business to one of our employees or a group of them or to a buyer. Um, and now all of a sudden it's a potential that we could have to close the thing down and, um, you know, give marching papers to the people that we care deeply about that we've raised families with. And more than anything, they're very, very skilled and capable craftspeople. And we don't have a local comp uh, competitor. They could go work their, their skill set, expend their skill set in. And so, um, this was going to be life-changing for them. And um, so, you know, that that's just such a driver for us and how we treat our people and the partnership we feel with our staff, that it was devastating. The thought of saying goodbye to them, the thought of making a, a personally selfish decision at some point that we have to retain enough of our retirement so we can still retire. And we can't just pour it into this business so that we can keep these people alive. And how do we manage and, um, and, and, through that process, we did what a lot of businesses have done. We pivoted. I've grown to hate that word during COVID, but we take, took a look at our, our verticals in our business and have added a market that is uh, a natural for us. I didn't realize before we dug into it what a natural it was for us, but we made that decision. All of our staff agreed with us. We ended up finding a new partner that we brought on, on staff that is going to help us learn more about that vertical. Everybody's more hopeful. Everybody's excited. Our, our current markets are healthy, but um, you know, one of them involves people getting together in places. Um, and because people weren't doing that, that work atrophied. But um, we now have um, a, a, another vertical that we're building and that's exciting. We had a couple of uh, salespeople that quit because things were so tough. Um, and our replacements for those were so incredibly positive. I mean, it, it's just, uh, I don't want to diminish the people that we had working for us before, but it, they were holy cow scores in the kinds of people that we got to join us in such a weird situation. Um, and, and since then we've had a few other of those. So our team has improved during this difficult time. We're not out of the woods by any stretch. Um, we're gradually growing as, as COVID, um, was reducing and um, things were opening up. We were, you know, our sales are gradually increasing. They're not rapidly increasing though. So um, losses are not yet a thing of the past. Our income continues to be a thing of the past right now, but we have hope. And I honestly want to say, and everybody knows it, if the leader of the organization doesn't have hope, nobody's going to have hope. Mm -hmm. And so it was really important to 30 people um, that I got my head straight and that I could see a future for our business. So we're not out of the woods. We're still struggling. We're still, um, dealing with some unemployment and some cut wages and, um, but I don't have any doubt now of where we're going. Um, I've shifted my former plan from being retired about now to, it'll be a few more years. 
we'll work through it, but I don't feel badly about that. I'm excited about it. Um, and, and all of my staff is, they're still making sacrifices. They're, they're struggling. We're, we're not done. Um, but we all see a, a different future ahead of us that doesn't involve the business shutting down. And while I had my fears about that, I know they had a completely different set of fears about that. And they don't feel the sense of control that I do. So it was really important that, that I got, uh, that it, it didn't just impact me, it impacted it everybody in our organization you shifted from the inside you went yeah. from the the fear and the anxiety and the worry to the hope and reconnected yeah. to joy again and you are the tip of the sphere of your company yep and you set the tone there right and, and we talk a lot yeah. about this in the academy we talk about yeah. how scientifically we can show up to eight to ten feet in front of us we can measure what our emotions are yeah. And we can sense this even if we're on Zoom. And so you literally shifted from the inside out from yeah. being in despair and worry to hope and joy mm -hmm. again. And mm -hmm. it's just such a testament of how you bounce back. I know you said you're not out of the woods yet, but just the, the journey that you and I have been through in this last six months to see your business turn around and to see you flourish is it's such a testament of who you are as a leader and to your commitment, not only to you, but to your family and to your employees. So just really hats off to you. Thank great, you. Great job. So thanks for developing this program and, and for getting it out there. It's, uh, it's been super beneficial for me and it, it, it's not something you do once it's something you continue to do. And so, yeah. And once you learn it, you keep, you keep using it. So how would you, how are you going to use this moving forward? Well, I use it daily. It just naturally happens now that I catch myself. Uh, even some of the things, I mean, that I would just get frustrated when, when I'd say something, you'd say, you just said it this way. You just said it that way. I, I do that in my head now. And if I hear a negative statement or if I'm having a bad day, which you still have, um, I, I catch it much more quickly. I sit down and work through my breathing techniques, my biofeedback. I focus on all the positive things. I do a much better job than I used to do of uh, assessing and giving myself credit for my accomplishments. Used to be that uh, I have a long, long, long list of expectations of myself. And as I accomplished them, they fell off the list and something else joined the list. It was an going uh, to-do list forever. I now do a job of... Um, evaluating where I am, giving myself permission to take some time and take care of myself and not feel like I should feel guilty about that. Um, you know, kind of taking the, uh, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but recognizing who I am and that I don't have as much power as I thought I do. But if I'm responsible for myself, um, so much changes from there. So I, um, I just catch myself more quickly. My language is different. Uh, my sleep is better. Um, I give myself more grace, but I'm also probably more productive and successful. <laughs> no. And happier on the inside, which I think is the yeah. ultimate key. And from that place, from the inside out, you're going to see more success. You're going to get that feedback. You're going to have greater connections with your employees and your family. And so sure. Stacy, I just want to say it has been an absolute pleasure to work with you and you. to see you along this journey and to gain a new friend as well. Thank you. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. The friendship is valuable um, yeah, and, you. and you are very skilled at what you've done and, and what you do in our lives. And so um, giving you after the skepticism, giving you the permission um, to, to work with me really was beneficial. You, you are the reason that core performance works the way it does. And thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here and sharing your journey. You bet. Thank you.